Book Tower Guard friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it is time for another Orc Mode Workout and today was Max Effort Lower Day. Quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please click a like down below. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. Overall, I'm happy with today's training session. Uh, it was hard. It was hard. I'm feeling a little bit beat up. But that's kind of what we're going to do moving forward. It's going to be just a lot of ass busting work. Okay. Taking everything that I've observed in myself over the last couple of years, messing with the different aspects of conjugate, you know, what I know about training, about the different literature, what the best coaches are doing, and it's time to just put in more and more work. And so it's going to be a lot more heavy work for a while. A lot of heavy work. Double maxes, a lot of triples, fives. And I'm not worried about metabolic fatigue. Right? I'm not worried about it because I get so much conditioning work on my GPP days and restoration work that we don't care. We just care about tension, effective reps, handling the heaviest weight I can for the reps that I can recover from and keeping them in the effective range. Now, that new bar, so much better. I don't hate this one. It's hard very very hard that was actually a max 441 with that bar is a max it's like a hundred pounds less than what i can do on other bars okay so it's hard but uh, it gives me a baseline to work with for percentages on it and i can tell that it works that upper back so much more that t-spine it's working the t-spine the other one doesn't work the t-spine the same it just works your neck that's the problem i have with the other one it's basically just a neck harness okay and it does nothing but make me black out and have headaches and migraines. This one, because again, the padding and the size and everything works, works well. Now it is the Titan one, and people who are curious, uh, it has the same specs as the Elite FTS. They copied them, basically, and stole their design at half the price. So I'm happy with it. Then I did some sumo. Um, I don't think I've ever really tested, at least with a mixed grip. I did it with hook grip a long time ago just a straight sumo. I'm like, let me just get some sumo work in. You know, I'm just going to start doing a little more of some of my classic lift variations. Probably not the back squat so much because I think box squats are better. Uh, but again, we can rotate through all this stuff, get percentages going. Uh, I'm not going to be afraid of just doing my, my direct deadlifts. Conventional sumo, all right? Same with all my benching. Numbers are going to go up quick. And I had a bunch of people who, who basically don't seem to understand, even some other lifters. With the benching, my benching has gone up. I just got hurt due to ring pull-ups. My bench went way down. I'm going to build it back up. All right, I'll be back past 350 again this year. Uh, the sumo here, though, felt better. But, I mean, I did the, four, the, the 565, and it felt easy. I should have went 585. I got a little greedy. Tried to go for 605 because I thought I might be able to get it. Uh, I couldn't. Tried twice there because I can't quite break it. If I can break a sumo off the floor, I can lock it. All right, that's my weak point off the floor. It's just the normal weak point on a sumo. It's the most common one. So uh, I'm probably going to mess with some rep work on sumos coming up here too. Okay. And it's kind of finding that balancing act of how many work sets or, or exercises I want to do on some of these supplemental lifts. Because I would love to do a box squat, a deadlift, and a good morning for my heavy rep work every session. But I've got to get my GHR and my reverse hypers in. It's a little hard to do all of it. Especially with the heavy work. Uh, it might be cases of where I have days where I don't do a GHR if I need to get the good mornings. But, again, I do more exercises on the upper body day. The lower body is just more taxing because I'm moving a lot bigger weights. And people have to remember I get more lower body work through the week because of all the sled drags and weight it carries. But, did these at 85% of the max that I just did for a 3x3. Three three. Felt good and challenging. Didn't, didn't bury me. And I might have gone for more, except I wanted a deadlift next. And I wanted to leave a little bit in the tank for the deadlift. I wanted to just get my effective reps. And since we ramped to a to a training max and then we did a three by three, we got our ten reps. And if we look at Prelopin's chart, we're right in our minimum minimum volume. Okay. At our minimum volume. But we're doing multiple exercises. But from a squat perspective, that's we we've hit that. And considering this these are heavy all the way from the bottom. Now again, I'm working with 85% of my maxes 
called straight weight. So every rep is an effective rep. So people will talk about volume, but you're missing the point. You don't understand volume and effective reps. I'm not doing 80%, guys. I'm doing 85% for triples. Every rep is an effective rep. We're in that same zone of when you get right up next to failure for upper threshold fibers. It's fine. It'll be fine. And I'll get plenty of fatigue on the uh, conditioning work on my GPP, which is all resistance-based. But I know based on my own experiences, the periods of time when I did the most maxing or I started working heavier supplemental work and my lifts went up. I've built a phenomenal foundation. I've got a lot of muscle right now. I built a really good foundation off all the volume. Now it's coming in to apply some tension whilst you're using the principles of conjugate. I'm basically just going to go max effort and, R and RE. Let me RE for a while. Then I decided I was going to do deficit deadlifts. I'm like, let's just do some straight up conventional deadlifts. I was going to do 500 for triples on deficit one. It just went 505. Uh, or sets of three after doing that other work. This was tough. Now, people are going to talk about, well, what about stimulus to fatigue? I'm getting to a point where I don't care about stimulus to fatigue. I do enough restoration work. I do my reverse hypers. Um... I'm starting to wonder if some of the people who promote some of this stuff because of their other ethical approaches, how much of it they're being honest or not. And I'm not going to get into all that. I don't want to start a fight. I don't want to start a controversy. Um, I don't know that I trust the honesty of some of these, these experts. It just is what it is. I'm not saying I'm disregarding stimulus to fatigue. I'm just saying we need good stress management with all of it. But you know, so what? Let me get in and do some deadlifts. My back and everything gets jacked off deadlifts. You know what? It does. And we need to come in and just do a little conventional work. Yeah, some normal sumo work. I'm going to do all of them for heavy reps. Let's get all around strong. Like you'll see me doing tons of different benching, incline, overhead pressing, chins, high pulls, variations of all of it. And you know, as far as, as this goes, uh, I, I feel like the work that I'm doing here this will build my deadlifts. If I mess with a couple of variations of sumo conventional real heavy, I do box squats, especially right now, but the, if I'm going to mess up with that safety bar because of the upper back, it actually carries over really well with the deadlift, and particularly the sumo deadlift. They, those two feed each other back and forth. Okay. But I feel like all this stuff and then the posterior chain, all the work I do, the reverse hyper glute ham race, we're good on posterior chain. All right. Keep building it. And as far as the, the upper back and stuff goes in the grip, well, the, the high pulls, all the chin ups, I'm going to start pushing my weighted chins hard again now. All the weighted carries I just recently started doing. Farmer's Watch built all that up. So, I mean, I've got a lot of tools there to do that that I'm doing regularly. So that'll all come along. Uh, but we've got to just come in and just do some work. And, and I'll tell you guys, just coming in and doing heavy triples on your conventional deadlift, this was hard. Again, let's come back over to ass-busting work. That's what it was. And anyone who wants to argue about our flight face, look at the bar bending. Shut up. Okay? You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Like, literally, if you really been truly believe that nonsense, you're so blinded by your bizarre hatred of me that you're delusional. You need psychiatric help. Look at the bar bending. So... <laughs> 505 for four sets of three. It was tough. Uh, the reverse hyper. I want to start putting some tension on here. Now, some people say, well, there's some swing. Yes, you can't get rid of swing on a reverse hyper. Okay, so so anyone who says that you can't, you can't. It's going to swing. There's no way to take the swing out, no matter how strict you go. There will be some. I did a five by five. 560. Because I've got up to where I did a 5 by 10 with 475. Now I want to start pushing some heavy tension. I want to get strong on this thing. Now people will say, but that's not how you use it. I do restoration work with it. I do sets of 50 reps on my off days. I do up to 50 rep sets with 180 pounds. I'm getting the restoration. I want to get strong on this thing. Because I know how hard it hits my glutes. Like this thing gives me glute dumps. So if I want my glutes and low back to keep getting stronger, why not use this tool Use it as a strength training tool. It's rated to hold 700 pounds. And you know what? I can't even put 700 on it because of the plates. I'm going to actually have to get find a way to get more calibrated plates, which is not even really an option at the moment. Rogue doesn't have them. 
they don't exist uh, or you know I'll, I'll need to get more but I mean if I get to a point where I can rip out fives or sixes with 700 pounds on this thing my god will my deadlift be at that's fine uh, so I want to push it for performance too I want to push it for performance also and people will say what about all your grip well, all my grip training is being addressed now I just do more deadlifting especially with that deadlift bar the way I'm doing these now to where I hang lower it uses a lot more grip this is grip training in and of itself all the chin-ups and then the loaded carries those farmers walks really 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 add up on my grip okay grips being addressed all the upper back stuff's being addressed we have a little more focus I think on some deadlifting for now deadlifting and benching we're going to do a lot of, of safety bar work in other in cambered bar because I want my shoulders to not be fatigued from squatting so I can focus on some bench. I need to get that bench up. Okay. Rehab the shoulders. I need to get my bench up. That's an ultra high priority and it's getting a higher priority. Uh, glute ham raises. This angle is terrible. I need to adjust the camera next time. These were hard because I did threes with this weight last time. I decided to try to do as many sets of five as I could. I barely made it through three by five. These were extremely taxing. I'm going to have to build up to doing these with really heavy weight. And, and I'm at the hardest setting I can physically fit inside of. I, I actually, one reason I clip it all off, it takes me forever to climb in and out. Because I can't really fit my leg in between, effectively between those pads to climb in. So we're, we're pretty much at the maximum setting I can get away with. Technically, in theory, there's one more out of the ten. I'm on the ninth out of the ten hardest but I can't physically fit. I won't be able to actually physically use the device on that setting. I will not fit in it. So we're going to try to get strong at the hardest setting. But doing the 25 on that, so that's a 5. Ooh, because I've done 10s with a 10-pounder, but that 25 was hard. Uh, so again, I can only get three sets today. But overall, happy with the workout. It was a little bit shorter than some of the others, but if we look at the, the effective reps, the weight move, the tension, this was a, this was a hard workout. It's a hard workout, and we got some good baseline numbers on some new lifts to program off of. So I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.